So there's seven, I'll go through this quick, seven significant indicators you need to know for your life. Number one, it said Jesus laid his hands on how many? Each, each one means one at a time, right? One at a time. Here's a phrase, knowing what you should lay your hands on is a significant multiplier. In other words, Jesus laid his hands on his disciples in Mark 6 and sent them out as in 12 to do what? Lay hands on the sick. Then he sent out 72 in Luke chapter 10 to do what? Lay hands on the sick. Then he sent the church out in Mark 16 to do what? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, Jesus had a choice what he laid his hands on. He could lay hands on each person one at a time and he'd have a great meeting, but he understood the significance was tied to his purpose and he laid hands on his people and he sent them out, thus multiplying his mission. In this day and age, it gets really blurry because distractions, distractions, distractions fight against urgency and the plan of God. And before you know it, you've lost the edge, you've lost the urge, you've lost the mission, you get all blurred and fatigued. Right? So here's the question you need to ask. Great screwdriver, big screwdriver, little screwdriver. This is a great blank, but does it add significance? Does it have a major effect and result in influence in relation to my assignment? You're you say, well, I got a lot of stuff in my house. Well, your, your mission, your assignment, your purpose must be pretty small if you can't declutter. If you have trouble decluttering, you got a small vision. Because a large vision causes you, what can I afford to lay my hand on? Everything you own owns you. You got to wax it, change the oil. I got to detox. I got to be lean and mean. I got to make sure I know what I'm doing. So here's the question. Does this serve my purpose? Go home Monday and say, does this serve my purpose? Does this collection of 3,000 Beanie Babies serve my purpose? <laughs> well, you can sell them. I don't know. Or does it, does it um, proclaim its purpose? This is too great to throw away. You ever said that? This is a great whatever. I can't get rid of that. Oh, tell me how that fits into your significance. Well, it doesn't. I just think it's a great, it takes up room. Ah, it gets tough. Again, your vision's too small if you can't declutter. Do you need it? Amen. Number two of this, of the seven points, Jesus knew who he was, his uniqueness, his uniqueness. And uh, I told the church a few months back, Drew and I were in Paris, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago. And in the springtime, Paris, of course, sets all the fashion, you know, black is the new black. Did you know that? No, it really was. That year, black, gray and black was the new black. And if you look down the streets of Paris, every single person had black or gray on. I mean, you're, you see hundreds of people walking down the street, and this is a true story. I mentioned it, so we looked. Not one splash of color. But that's weird because you're made colorful. See, you're not made like everyone else. And when you buy into being everyone else, you can be accepted or not, you know, you lose your uniqueness. Am I right? You, you're unique. Your uniqueness is your value. Jesus knew who he was. He couldn't stay there. He had to move on. Number three, Jesus had to pray. He took time to pray. He needed to hear God. Yesterday's strategies would not work tomorrow. Number four, again, these are significant uh, multipliers. He was not moved by people. The opinions of people did not, please stay. Please, you have a great meeting right here. No, I must go on, for this is why I was sent. Can you define why you were sent? Can you define your purpose? Is it easily defined? What are you doing? They tried to keep him from leaving, he said, but I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also because that is why I was sent. Doing great things is no replacement for doing significant things. You have to discern the difference. Understand this, you can only say no when you know your yes. This is important. You can only say no when you know your yes. And this is why people get distracted, they don't have a yes. This is why salespeople fail, they don't have a yes. They don't know, they don't have a track, they don't know what to do, they're just kind of hoping. And if you hope to end up somewhere, you're not gonna get there because you have to know the blueprint to build the house. 
Where should you be doing it? Jesus said, I need to go to the other towns of Judea as well. What territory has God called you to? What niche? Don't try to copy others. Where has he called you to have significance? Number seven, that is the reason why I was sent. Survival mentality will not work. Distractions will take you every time. Here's a key. Going on vacation, when you go on vacation, how do you act? The week before vacation, how do you act? You get up at 5 a.m., you work till 3 o'clock a.m. Why? Do you? A week, you're going to the Bahamas, you got a week, and what happens? The house gets completely cleaned up. All the bills get paid on time. The office, for the first time in 12 months, is now clean. Papers are not scattered all over the floor. All the phone calls you were supposed to be making have been made, and you now feel, okay, we can leave. Why? What's the difference? Because you see right before you the reward. You see the vacation, and you're urgent about your activity. If you live like you do before you go on vacation, you would be extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. I can only mention these in passing. Number eight, and I won't have time to cover them. The law of generosity. The law of generosity positions you for favor. God gives seed to the sower. Seed to the sower and bread for eating. Being generous, having the the law of uh, being generous, being a giver positions you, accelerates you uh, to a great tomorrow. And the last law that God showed me, number nine, the law of celebration. Because we have all these laws. They're aiming towards some place. The law of celebration, if you're not talking about reward, I mean, you got to have the law of celebration. Even the angels celebrate when someone comes to Christ. You see, you can live in a world where celebration is, is absent. You're working so hard, there's no celebration. And you lose hope. You lose the joy of the work. God is a rewarder. Given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God wants you to celebrate his goodness. He wants you to celebrate people. He wants you to celebrate your family. Celebration, the law of celebration is life. It is life. And God wants you to understand that every journey, every path, every significance has a reward attached to it, and there's celebration attached to it. To be grateful, thankful to be celebrating who God is, that he's given you the strategy, he's given you the business, he's given you whatever, you know, and to, to celebrate that and be thankful and grateful. Friend, the law of celebration is an important law, to be thankful, to be grateful, to celebrate God's goodness, to thank him that he has equipped you to win the race. Amen? Nine steps, nine laws of acceleration. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and things.